Introducing YouTube memberships, a fun way to support the channel while getting some exclusive perks. Click the join button to become a member now and get benefits like badges next to your name on videos, behind the scenes photos, advantages during the live trivia game, discounts on merchandise, private one-on-one -on -one video chats, the ability to request future video topics, and exclusive 8-10 to 10 minute videos on the history of the NFL. And now, on with our feature presentation. The downfall of Tony Romo is one of the saddest stories in broadcasting right now. Look, there was a time when Tony Romo was the best color commentator in the game. He was an absolute revelation. Remember, prior to him, the number one color commentator at CBS was Phil Simms, who was good in his heyday, but by this point, had no chemistry with Jim Nance, was offering awful analysis, and was saying absolutely idiotic things every other minute like this. Remember, for it to be a forward pass, it's gotta go forward. The speed of the game was getting to be too much. So when Romo came in, he changed everything. He was able to diagnose plays. He brought energy and enthusiasm that made it obvious that he was having fun. And he was doing a masterful job explaining the game to people in almost a John Madden-like style. His call at the end of the 2018 AFC Championship, where he just tore apart Kansas City's defense and correctly predicted everything that the Patriots were going to do in overtime based on how they lined up, was one of the most masterful jobs of announcing I've ever seen in my life. He truly changed the game in more ways than one. He was absolutely elite. But now, oh man, it's absolutely painful. Now you have a guy who doesn't do that, who has been out of the league for a bit, and is not putting in the necessary prep work since he can't rely on his knowledge of his time around players and around coordinators. And a guy who has no filter, and is talking twice as much as before, without offering anything. That's Romo's biggest problem right now. He does not know when to let the broadcast breathe. And just about anything that comes to his mind, and I truly mean anything, he's going to spew out. At its worst, it's like a stream of consciousness. And you know what happens when you have no filter, you don't think before you speak, and you just say whatever the heck comes to your mind and hope for the best? You get moments like whatever the heck happened yesterday that we really need to talk about, because holy cow, this was bad. For those who missed it, here's a brief rundown of how the game was playing out. It's October 15, 2023, it's week six of the NFL season, and we're at Allegiant Stadium for this battle between the two and three Las Vegas Raiders and the one and four New England Patriots. You might be wondering, why the heck are Jim Nance and Tony Romo, as in the number one crew at CBS, calling a game between two really bad teams, with the Pats potentially being the worst one-win team in football at the moment? Well, that's because this game is a dry run for the Super Bowl. The network televising the game always likes to have one game where they send their number one crew just to test out some camera angles and position everything and establish familiarity with the venue. So this game was the dress rehearsal for the big game. Just keep that in mind. This is, for all intents and purposes, when everyone has to be on their A game. And as rough of a game as this was for Tony Romo, including one moment where he said that the penalty on the play was definitely going to be roughing the passer, when in reality, it was illegal hands to the face, and another moment where he called the Patriots' run perfectly executed, despite the fact that it got called back for holding, I don't know how that works, it was just as rough for the Patriots, who found themselves down 19-10 in the fourth quarter, with the end zone, as it has been for practically the entire season with Matt Jones under center, resembling a brick wall and an impenetrable force. However, with first single at the one-yard line and the Pats down by nine, running back from Andre Stevenson punches it in for a touchdown to make it a 19-16 ball game. The Patriots, after a 10-minute drive that turned at 10 o'clock but got the job done, are now down by just three points. This is where most color commentators would talk about the touchdown that they just saw. Talk about the blocking, talk about the hard running of Stevenson, talk about the long drive, you know, talk about something. But Tony Romo decided not to do that. Because instead, 
Romo had some, shall we say, bizarre analysis of what the Patriots should do next. Take a listen. But I always thought if you go for two and you get it, Jim, then you can be really aggressive on defense, and if they score, you're still down eight points, and you got a chance with the ball. Yes, you heard that right. No, your ears are not deceiving you. Tony Romo just seriously suggested in a three-point game with 3.36 left that the Patriots, who may I remind you, are down by three points, should go for the two-point conversion. The Pats should try and go for two here to make it a 19-18 ball game. I usually reserve this line for coaches doing stupid things and saying stupid things. But Tony Romo, what you just said was so nonsensical that I have to break it out here. You left me no choice but to do it. I'm sorry, what? Okay, let's think about this for a few seconds and the risk and reward of both options. Option one is to kick the extra point, like everyone with the brain would have done in that spot, like Bill Belichick ended up doing, and like play-by-play -play man Jim Nance would have done, with him basically putting Romo in his place and saying, what the heck are you talking about, partner? Take a listen. So you got it. I, I, I like this play right here. Ryland. Because now you win it with a field goal. It's true. If you kick the extra point, we have to assume it's an automatic play. Kickers are hitting at a 98% clip this season. Rookie kicker Chad Ryland has not missed an extra point so far in his young career. And dating back to his last two years of college, prior to the kick in question, he is 92 for 93 on extra points going back to 2021, or hitting them at 98.9%. Granted, extra points are closer in college than they are in the NFL, but you get the idea. The extra point is a near-automatic play around the league, and it's automatic for Chad Ryland, with the Pats being no exception. You kick the extra point, and you make it a 19-17 game. Now, you're only down by two. What does this mean? Well, it means that if you get a stop defensively and you drive down the field to kick a field goal, you go up 20 to 19 and you win the game. Pretty simple stuff. Now, let's say you go for two points. The odds of getting a two point conversion are not 98% or 99% or whatever percentage you want to use like they are for extra points. The odds of getting a two point conversion are somewhere in the ballpark of 50%. They are significantly worse. And my guess with this Patriots offense, with how bad they are, is that the percentage would probably be even lower than that. However, let's entertain that possibility, Tony. Let's entertain the possibility that they go for two, even though you're the only person in America who thinks they should do that. If you get the two, guess what? You're still trailing as you're down 19 to 18. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you get a stop defensively and you drive down the field to kick a field goal, you go up 21-19 and you win the game. Which means that, oh yeah, going for two and getting it results in the exact same best case scenario as kicking the extra point with the higher percentage. But if you don't get it, you're still down 19-16 which means that a field goal only ties the game if you pull it off. So let me get this straight. Kicking the extra point and successfully getting the two-point conversion result in the exact same scenario needed to win the ball game. But failing to get the two-point conversion does not result in that. This is like, in a tie game in basketball, having a breakaway with two seconds left, and instead of dunking the ball or laying it up, trying to pull up and shoot a three. The dunk and the three give you the same result. You win the game. But one of them is significantly easier and is significantly more automatic than the other. To the point where it would make no logical sense to try the three-point option. There are only two possible ways that going for two make any sense. And neither of which apply here, nor should they apply. Option one is that you trust your defense to get a safety. Because in that case... Yes, there is a difference between being down 1917 and being down 1918. Seeing as a safety at 1917 ties the game and a safety at 1918 wins it. 
However, what are the honest to God odds of that happening? Just about every kickoff goes to the 25-yard line with a touchback. And the Raiders have one real drive left, since if they get it back a second time, it's either with them trailing or with them just taking a knee to run out the clock. That means that the only way you're getting a safety that impacts the game is if something catastrophic happens on the kickoff, which again, it's not gonna because you're just gonna boot it out of the end zone, or the Raiders somehow lose 25 yards in three plays. So that idea is so outlandish as to not even entertain that possibility. Option two is, as this man right here, Tony Romo, said, what if the Raiders score a touchdown? And true, if the Raiders score a touchdown and kick the extra point, a 26-17 game is a lot different than a 26-18 game, with one being two scores and the other being just one score. Well, there's two flaws with that argument, Tony. Number one, there is three minutes left in the game. The Raiders have a backup quarterback in there due to Jimmy Garoppolo's injury. They're not throwing the football. They're not going to score a touchdown. They're not going 75 yards, nor do they even want to, nor is that their objective. If they mount a long drive, the clock is just going to run out on them anyways, and they'll win the game that way. And number two, if they do somehow score a touchdown, what's to say that they don't go for two themselves to try and make it a nine-point game, thereby negating the entire reason that you went for two in the first place? So the two arguments that are, quite literally, the only reason to go for two in that spot, outside of just forgetting what the score of the game was, are that if you get a safety and force the Raiders to lose 25 yards in three plays, it benefits you. And if the Raiders score a touchdown and kick the extra point, or you stop the two-point conversion on a drive where they're just trying to turn clock and are not trying to score a touchdown, it benefits you. I mean, do you realize how stupid that is? There is no incentive whatsoever to going for two points in that spot. I truly mean it. None at all. In fact, if Bill Belichick was dumb enough to take your advice, he would be front and center on dumb decisions. No questions asked. It would be the stupidest coaching move of his entire career. Going for two there is all risk and no reward. You're in the exact same spot whether you get the two or get the one but you're in a significantly worse spot if you don't get the two versus taking the automatic one. There is no difference between 1918 and 1917, but the difference between 1917 and 1916 is the size of the Gulf of Mexico. That's how bad it is. And again, this all just comes down to Tony Romo not thinking before he spoke, which is a pretty common theme for him. This wasn't even a brain fart on his end where he forgot what the score was because he tried doubling down on this by explaining the reasoning and the strategy behind it, even though there really wasn't any strategy at all. Tony, I promise you, man, if you have to collect your thoughts for a second before speaking and delivering nonsensical proposals like the one in the game between these two teams behind it right here, it's going to be okay. I promise you, man, it's going to be okay. Tis better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak and to remove all doubt. If ever that phrase applied, it's with Tony Romo during this broadcast right here, because holy cow, this was inexcusably bad. So what do we learn from all of this? Seriously, for the love of God, if it's a three-point game with three minutes left, and you just scored a touchdown to cut it to three, do not go for two. Unless your kicker is Brett Maher, or unless your kicker is injured, there are no circumstances there where you should go for two. None at all. Kick the extra points so a field goal gives you the win, because not only is that a higher percentage play, but that's the exact same scenario as what happens if you go for two and you get it. The risk and reward for the extra point and for the two-point conversion are miles apart from each other. Tony Romo, man, you gotta know the situation. This was just inexcusable on so many levels for the number one analyst on CBS. If Romo said nothing after this play, there would be no video. But because he had to open his mouth and say whatever came to his mind, we got what has to be. In Tony Romo's seven-year broadcasting career, the dumbest comment thus far 
that he's ever made. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.